Thank you, board, for this um, meeting. It's very saddening after being a parent of Culver City for eight years to have my sixth grader, 11 year old child, be excited about going to Culver City and now being afraid to go to school, to have her in tears because she was told by a security guard that black kids don't deserve to live, they should kill themselves. And for me to get in my car and pick my child up from school and ask her how was her day and her to say that to me and say, mommy, don't get out the car. It's OK. It's not OK. My 11 year old should never be spoken to that way by an adult, especially when we're paying taxes for that adult. And then to be told that it's OK because that person was fired and everything is OK. Everything is not OK because my child was afraid to go back to school. There was an active shooting last night in Michigan. Now that this person has been fired, will he now say, well, you know, the same black kids who don't deserve to live and all black kids should die. Will he get mad to come up to the school and do a shooting? I pray to God he won't. But there is no guarantee. There's no action. We don't know what this person looked like. He knows what my child looks like, but we don't know what he looks like. We don't know his name. My child wrote a complaint to the school. No one from that day to this day has called me to say, how is your child doing? Is your child OK? I kept her out of school and then sent her back to school a couple of days because of that. But you know what? No one's called. No one has written and said, is anybody OK? No one's even offered my child counseling. My child lives in over city and we around every culture there is my has been diverse ever since she's been in this world. but to have a school staff member say that to her and other students it is not okay it is absolutely not okay and to hear this meeting and to have us be told we got a minute or two minutes on valentine's day which it don't matter because we got love 365 days a year but to be treated like we don't matter it does matter and we deserve better quality. We deserve better answers and we deserve to be treated like we matter, not like we're a minute or 90 seconds worth the whole what you got to say. This is out of control. Thank you so much. Uh, Board Loretto, can you please mention the next three uh, people to provide comment? Yes, good evening, everyone. My name is Michael Barrett. Uh, that was my lovely wife, Keisha Barrett, and we are supposed to be uh, I'm sorry. Uh, sorry for uh, we couldn't hear you, Board President. Um, were you? Yes, I, uh, Mr. Barrett, if you can uh, grant us a few uh, seconds before you start, uh, can you please mention the next three uh, members of the audience to provide public comment out loud? Uh, Tiffany Niles Queensboro, Amy Palmer, and uh, Deanna Neville. No. Mr. Barrett, if you can continue, and uh, apologies for the interruption. Yes, good evening. That was my wife. Um, and we are supposed to be out this evening uh, enjoying ourselves, but yet we sacrifice our time to come here. I know it's a sacrifice to all the parents that are here. And what I just want to say is, what is the action plan? We already know that there's a problem. That's why everybody's in this room. And the problem with Culver City is a lot of times when you're faced with the problem, you want to dance around the problem. I think the issue tonight is, what is the action plan? to the problem. Every parent that's here obviously know there's a parent. I thought I was just coming on behalf of my 11-year-old child to address her issue, but obviously there are many issues in the room tonight and we need an action plan in place so we can come together as adults and figure out what's best for our children. That's what's important. That should be the agenda. Everything else can be delayed, can be put on hold, but we need to find out what can we do to make sure our babies are safe? So when you go back and you rub and hug your children and uh, uh, kiss them goodnight and walk them to school or drive them to school in the morning, be mindful of the families that are here that are concerned about their children. And we all should be concerned about our children. We all should live in a place where we don't have to fear. 
And as adults, I believe we can do that if we work together. So thank you. And please take that into consideration. God bless you. Hello, everyone. Thanks for everyone's presence tonight. Um, my name is Tiffany niles Queensborough. I'm actually uh, recently here from Toronto, Canada. My family and I have been here for six months. And similar to everybody else, I came here because I believe that the Culver City District literally lived up to its reputation. I have to say that uh, the legacy is not up, like living up to its standard. And so I'm not going to belabor the issue of safety here. But one of the things that I did want to share is I think at this stage in the matter and just reinforcing what was shared is that things that I have observed here, um, there's an, a safety issue. I do see a significant decrease in the standards, the academic standards of excellence. And this is evidenced by a high turnover of educators, a lack of support to, I think, the administration of each school, but especially middle school and high school. Uh, to uphold the standards of safety, high ac academic standards. Poor there's a lot of poor behavior in the classroom with students, and there's a disrespect to teachers in the classroom. I also see a poor response to this crisis of what I see. Um, so in a nutshell, what I'm asking for urgently is a strategic plan. And I think that strategic plan needs to be released to the public in a very timely manner. I think there needs to be assessment that's shared and analysis that's shared um, and, a, and an evaluation to show what those outcomes are and that the community needs to be engaged in that process. And we need to have clear communication. Thank you. Hey there, my name is Amy Palmer and I have a seventh grade in middle school. What I want to know is what the schools are currently doing to handle and discipline these kids who continue to fight in the school. I want to know what's happening to these repeat offenders. And I don't mean the in-school support and the increased training. I want to know what's happening specifically to the kids involved in these fights. Are they sent back to class? Are they sent home? Do they sit in a room to talk about their feelings? Whatever is being done, it's simply not working. The fights continue to escalate weekly. For my son's entire life, my husband and I have been teaching him that there are actual consequences for bad behavior and disrespect. I'm assuming you teach your kids that too. The schools need to do the same thing. These kids need to learn accountability. They need to learn respect. From what I hear about the fights, the bathrooms, the safety hazards, the trash, the vaping, there is a complete lack of respect from these kids. I'm on board with more adult presence in the schools during lunch and more team training and counseling support and investing in the community. Of course, that all sounds great, but that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the actual consequences for the actual kids creating the unsafe environment. In school suspensions, actual suspensions, expulsions, zero tolerance policies. What's your plan moving forward because the current one is failing miserably? We live in one of the most desirable cities in Los Angeles. Parents break their backs to get into this school system. But now it's just embarrassing and really disappointing how totally dysfunctional the school is. Kids should be safe in school, period. Thank you. Before before we I'm sorry, before we begin, I'm gonna call the next three folks who are Augusta Pogi, Kim Otterman, Lori Flenner, and um we have one more in person who's uh Donna Diaz Tutan. Hi, my name is Deanna. I have two kids in the school district. One is in eighth grade, one is in tenth grade. Um, so I have experience in both schools I'd like to speak about. First of all, like many, my husband and I moved here to Culver City initially because we had heard the schools were great and it was great when we started. Um, obviously, we've fallen in love with Culver City for many other reasons than that. But our opinion on the schools have changed. I'm embarrassed. I'm embarrassed to live here now. When we started at Farragut, um, I loved it. The facilities were old and kind of under disrepair, but the teachers and the community made that all worthwhile. And we looked past all of that. But then our kids got to middle school and high school and it got even worse. My kids hold their urine all day and don't go to the bathroom because they say the bathrooms are gross and because there's drugs in the bathroom. My daughter says she is afraid to go to the bathroom because it smells like pot. The security guards smell the pot and they do absolutely nothing. So that's just one thing. But I've even shrugged some of that off until recently with two things that I have a problem with. The first, obviously, what everybody's speaking about is the violence. I'm just really disheartened about what's going on in our schools. Families pay a ton of money to live here, whether it's rent or mortgage. And yet 
the schools have gone downhill quickly. Um, there's an uptick in violence. My kids are scared. My daughter is scared about the drugs. My son is being bullied in the eighth grade and the same kid keeps doing shit to him and it's not getting resolved. Um, there's fat fights happening all over. And the weird thing is that the kids seem to think that it's normal. They're posting it on social media. What are parents telling their children that these kids think that this is fine, that my, my son said um, two kids got in a fight because one kid took another kid's talkies at lunch and they got in a fight. I'm like, fight over that what are these children being taught where is the education about proper behavior where's the respect what are kids pa parents saying to them at home you seem to have pride in their school the way that it looks and the way that it makes them feel and how they feel when they're there the security is doing nothing nothing is happening and the second one is the elimination of honors um, the school district, I understand what was what we were trying to do with the elimination of honors, but it's not working. And we've thrown the baby in the bathwater. My daughter, who's I'll finish up, I swear. My daughter, who's a sophomore, I said, I'm going to wait and see what happens and how this goes. And I will I will give the grace to see how this goes. My daughter, who is a sophomore, has said that it's not working. She's been in honors the whole way. And as a sophomore now, she says she is not challenged. She's now getting like an A++++ in her English class and she's not being challenged. And she says the class is kind of a joke. So it's not working. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. I'm sorry. Please, please email us if you did not finish. Thank you. I'd like to recommend uh, for the audience, if you can please state your name and last name before you start your public comment. Uh, thank you so much. Um, next, uh, what, uh, Augusta Pogi, any, no longer here? Uh, Kim Otterman, no longer here? Uh, Lori Flenner? Thank you, school board and superintendents and the community that's here tonight. My name is Laurie Flenner. I'm also a parent of a student at CCMS. Um, I'm here to also speak about taking action to create a peaceful campus and create a culture where students can learn without fear. There was a day soon in, uh, after the start of the school year that I received a call from my son who was taking refuge in a classroom. He told me he needed me to come to the school right away to get him because he was not safe. This is a kid who is brave beyond. I, this was so uncharacteristic. I ran to the school. I dropped everything. I canceled me. I ran to the school. My kid would never do this. But he was trapped in the classroom because there was such violence going on outside of it. I decided to take action and try to work with the school to get more parents on the campus quickly to make a, something happen to improve this culture. I spoke to and got the support of over a hundred parents who told me all of these stories, what I'm hearing here tonight, over and over again, students who hold, who hold their bathroom to the end of the day because they're afraid to enter a restroom, recently spoke with a teacher who said the exact same thing. Um, students who, can't feel safe to go and eat lunch, looking for places to go and hide during lunch. Oh, I'm gonna go try to find a, a stairwell that I can cower in so I can be unmolested while I eat. It's ridiculous. Um, I'm here to urge the board to look for better ways to mitigate this violence on campus to ensure students who demonstrate bullying and violence do not repeat it or perpetuate it. Specifically, my experience with New Earth Counseling and the third party security has been extremely negative. The stories that I've heard come home, my own personal experience with it, I believe the district reevaluate those services and put better trained and more effective personnel in place in addition to other actions. Thank you. Thank you. Before we take the next speaker, we're, I'm gonna announce the three after. There will be Robert Villa, Francis Yang, Carrie uh, King. Good evening. My name is Anna Diaz Tutan, and I'm a parent to a sixth grader at CCMS and a second grader at Farragut. Will the district offer and implement support by way of counseling and weekly check ins for students who show disturbing behavior around interest about gun violence? Months ago, a CCMS student who was my child's assigned table partner 
talk repeatedly about how he wanted a gun and to shoot students. Showed off to my child a fellow CCMS student slide of a classroom with people with gunshot wounds and blood, talked about cocaine and death, and has received nothing but detention, reassigned to a different seat, and one chat from staff. I have written and spoken to various staff, yet received very little follow-up about support for these students displaying troubling behavior. Why is there no counseling and regular checking in being immediately arranged for this child and his friend? And why hasn't CCOSD initiated nor CCPD been notified to perform a house check if these children have access to guns from their homes? The second point I have is why are CCMS students who have nothing to do with any fighting but quickly walk away from commotion in order to avoid getting hurt, being punished and privileges taken? During three large fights at CCMS in one day, a staff member said over the speaker that the whole of sixth grade were to lose an upcoming fifth grade event due to the fighting. CCMS staff need to be on the same page about how to manage the fighting and not send mixed messages to the students. We need transparent communication from CCMS staff and the district about what steps are taken to reprimand those involved in the fighting. And we need you to be accountable for creating a safe space for all CCMS students. My sixth grade daughter has grown anxious and feels unsafe at CCMS. And the failed efforts to reprimand troublesome students has influenced our decision to leave the district for a safer school environment. Thank you. Yes. Hi, my name is Robert Villa. I've got a uh, child at the middle school, elementary school, nephews at the high school, a niece at the middle school, and loved ones throughout many of the schools. Um, I would love to know what's going to happen and what needs to be happened for immediate action. From where I grew up, I'll tell you, on Thursday, my, my daughter came home from school and we we're having dinner. I asked her how her day was, and she told me that there was five fights. She starts to label them, and I said to him, is there, I, I, I couldn't believe it. I said, is there any, any evidence of this? And it took about 60 seconds for her to group text a number of people for me to get a couple of videos of what exactly happened on Thursday. And I had to tell her, please, you have to move away from this. I can tell you where I grew up. I grew up with some things that I saw in middle school and high school that I can't unsee. And what she discussed with me on Thursday sounded very familiar to where I graduated 29 years ago. And that is not why I'm in Culver City. It's not. And I am wondering what it's going to take. Is it going to be a knife attack or is it going to be a gun attack? Who, is it going to take a dead body? Is it going to set a generation back at Culver City? Honestly, for somebody to step up and say now is now. Now is the time. We can't wait because this is going to happen at some point. If this keeps escalating at this pace. Something is going to happen. Is it going to take me and all of the other parents collecting all of these videos to send them to the media and say, please do something about this because our administration won't? What is it going to take? I don't know. But what I can tell you is that I do not like having a 13-year-old daughter who I am not happy with sent into school because she is not safe, in my opinion. When I tell her, you must run when these things happen because I've seen what happens if you don't. And it may not be happening to you. It doesn't have to happen to you because it may end up happening to you, even if it's not happening to you in that moment because you're too close. And if somebody doesn't make a move quickly to tighten this up, I hope not to be around to see it. And I hope my daughter isn't either because we will be. Thank you. Carrie King, I hate to speak after my husband. I never know how that's gonna go. Um, I can't do it like he does it, so I'll do it my way. Um, I am a psychologist in Culver City. I work with kids and teenagers. I hear a lot of things. I work with a lot of kids who don't live in Culver City. I hear a lot of things from them too. I had a little, tiny sweetest little thing in my office this afternoon. She made a Valentine to her nanny, which I have in my hands. I got this half because she wanted hers to be rainbow order and this wasn't rainbow order. So I got the first draft. You're so sweet, Abby. I love you, Abby, so much. You're the best, Abby. You're so curious and kind, Abby. Super sweet. And that's what this kid was thinking about at five o'clock this evening. 
my kid at five o'clock this evening was thinking about her parents here, not at home with her doing our annual Valentine's celebration. And like my husband said, the five fights that she saw on Thursday and all of the advice that her parents gave her and the shock that she had when we told her how we grew up. I mean, I remember being on the bottom of a bus with bullet shots going by at a basketball game, guns at a hotel party. This is, this is where we grew up. And we came across the country and we landed in Culver City because my brother lives here. And he said, they're great schools. And this is what we've got. And it's really disappointing. And it's, it is embarrassing, but more than embarrassed, I feel so concerned. I'm so concerned. And I think everybody here wants, it would be willing to be part of the solution, but we get these emails that tell me less than I knew before I read the email. Emails filled with acronyms that mean nothing to me. It's, it's just unbelievable. We want to know what you're doing. We want to know when it's going to happen. Sure, we want to know how we can help but we want to know what you're doing. Thank you. I'm sorry, I'm gonna announce the next couple of folks before you begin. Um, the next uh, folks after uh, Francis Yang are Ann Butcher, Anitra Smith. I have one that's just Monique. Um, and uh, Raquel London. It's my time now starting because I have a number, so I just want to go. Ahead. Okay, perfect. Thank you, board members and superintendent. Thank you so much for listening to us. I know it's a lot to hear, but I just wanted to talk about two topics. The topic I support, the resolution of education, higher education and equity. I have three children. They all learn differently. Um, I have one child who loves to learn, another child who cares less about learning, and another child who's very mixed about depending on the topic. Um, what I'm talking about first is that safety. I have one child in high school, one in middle school, and one who doesn't want to come to the middle school. The first couple times we picked up our kids, high school, middle schooler, we saw two fights, one in front of the high school, one in front of the middle school, and my child's like, where's the police? Where are the parents? And there was nobody in sight. You, we couldn't go out because we're in our cars. Nobody was helping these children. To me, that was a red flag. It was in front of the offices. Nobody that did anything. Another thing, my child is in a class where a tile had just fallen off, didn't hit them, but had just fallen and they had missed them. Showed me a picture. I don't know, I haven't been on campus, but I would really appreciate it. When are these tiles gonna be fixed in the classrooms? Third, the education. I have a child in the high school. It is too easy in this classroom. They say, mom, they say it's equity, equitable. They say it's, that's the reason. And they're told it's okay. I want my child to be challenged. We are immigrants. My family are immigrants. We came to this country to have a better life, a better education to get out of poverty. My children are in that. We want to be able to give them a better education. Please look into the safety and higher education for our children, because this is why we chose Culver City. Thank you. Hi, my name is Ann Butcher. I have two girls in the Culver City School District. One is in seventh grade. The other is in fifth going into the middle school this coming year. Um, clearly, we cannot understate the collective concern and frustration about the safety of the students, in particular at the middle school. Uh, I would like to echo the request for accountability for the instigators of the fighting in particular. Um, I'm going to share with you, this is, you know, incidental, but I have, there have been countless conversations that I have heard uh, about the decline of the reputation of CCMS and CCHS, weapons, fights, assaults, building integrity, the drugs in the bathroom. As a parent, I am having a hard time separating rumor from fact. Uh, there's a problem with transparency and communication from school leadership. 
if the collective energy of the parents looking into alternative schools, like I am, could go into this school system, we can affect the change that we need. There's a lot of energy, obviously, around how to come to solutions and how to improve. I don't wanna spend my energy looking for other schools and how to come up with financial aid for private schools or moving my family. I want to make this work, but I don't know how to do it. So I'm looking for the help of you all. Um, I'm also just asking that there are, that the school board and the superintendent and the principals, everyone who can just simply be tougher, set clear boundaries for what's acceptable for the sake of our kids. Good evening, happy Valentine's Day. My name is Raquel London. Um, my daughter is a junior at the high school. I'm appalled that I have to stand here and hear all of these stories. Me, my husband, we moved to Culver City because we were so excited about Culver City High School and our daughter having a diverse learning experience where she was going to thrive and do so well. Well, my daughter shook for the whole day and evening after I picked her up after she was attacked and assaulted while a security guard stood right there. And this mob that all knew and they were prepared to form this circle, just like your city and videotape what happened to my daughter. So I want accountability and I'm not going anywhere until I get it. You can put that sign down because there is a major problem here. And I wanna know what are you doing about it? Because no way should I have to send my child and this student who attacked and assaulted her is standing at the school days later, beating up, attacking, assaulting other kids, riding around the campus looking for another student. I'm appalled and I want accountability and I want it quick and I'm waiting very patiently, but my patience is running thin. So please don't let this fall on deaf ears because I take my daughter's safety first and foremost. I mean that with every ounce, everything within me. And I'm so thankful that my daughter did not come with the scars and the scratches that I saw others experience. And so please, do better. We're here to help and support. So let's get it right and let's get it right now because it's not on my watch. And I'm not playing. Can we get the next uh, member audience name? We were still waiting for Anitra Smith and Monique. Thank you. Hi, my name is Anitra Smith. Not only do I have a 11 year old who's in the sixth grade at Culver City Middle School, but I myself am is actually a Culver City alumni for the class of 2003. I attended Bell Ring Pond Elementary School. I attended Culver City Middle School, Culver City High School, and never in my life have I have ever experienced what my daughter experienced with one of your staff members about a week or so ago. On Thursday, February, February 2nd, Culver City Middle School sent out an email at 2.15 p.m. regarding an incident that occurred three hours prior during the sixth grade lunch. It said that there was an incident involving a staff member who used offensive language toward students and was immediately removed from the campus, which in my opinion, my opinion was very vague and not transparent at all. When I picked up my daughter from school, she advised me, not anyone at CCMS, my daughter advised me, that she was racially targeted by a security guard who told them, I hate black people. You all don't belong here. You should just kill yourselves. I wish you all would die. Yes, the security guard was removed from the campus, but then what? What if that guard had chosen to retaliate at that moment when, when he was removed? What if that guard was already armed while he was on the campus and decided to take that day to harm our children? 
Do you know his background history? Was authorities even notified? What's going on with the security company? Because I know some of us parents does not even know what happened. You guys kept us behind closed doors. When we came up to you guys, you wanted to talk behind closed doors. There's no, no type of communication was ever sent out after that. It shouldn't take for my child to communicate that to me. And I hate to say it, things like that could cause anyone to like, retaliate. That security guard could retaliate on our children. And that's how active shootings happen. That's how mass shootings happen. Okay. I kept my daughter from home that next day because I was, I was concerned for her safety. It's a real problem. It is. The next day, when I, the following day, when I brought her to school, I had to have a discussion with my daughter about an active shooter and what to do in the case that something did happen, in the case that security guard did decide to come back up to the school. The responsibility of the communication shouldn't have been left up to their children. As a matter of fact, it's already traumatizing enough for them to have to be told that they're basically worthless. So how do you expect them to actually repeat it to their parents? Here, I lay those words that came from your, one of your it's heartbreaking. I don't care. When I spoke to CCMS administration, I was basically told just to have my child file an incident report. And all you were following up on was the security company. Like, oh, we'll just follow up with the security company. Then what? Nothing. There was absolutely nothing. I even emailed you guys multiple times, no communication. I even included in my email superintendent Kwok Tran and to the David Harley. And guess what? No one has responded to my emails. And I am pissed the hell off. And at this point, I have already went ahead and filed a claim with the office, with the Civil Rights Office for U.S. Department of Education. And you will be hearing from them soon because if y'all can't get the shit together, we're going to get it together for y'all. And if y'all don't need to sit up in them seats, we're going to find somebody else to sit up in them seats. Thank you, everyone. Please, I want to remind us that these are topics that are really important and we are here listening to all your comments. Um, I also want to say we do have students in the audience, and if we can please refrain from using language that's inappropriate, uh, I would really appreciate it. Thank you so much, and apologies. Uh, at, please continue with public comment. Yeah, sir. Hello, my name is Monique Blake. Thank y'all for being here. I mirror everything that's behind me and what's coming after me. Now, I speak for the voices while I stand here. And when I say voiceless, I mean the special ed students who are seeing this treacherous crap happening the paint off. We rely on staff members, other adults that you vet, that you hire and allow to be here. So it befuddles my mind when I have to hear three months later that my special needs speechless daughter was assaulted by a known bully at your school to the ground from another fucking kid. And I don't give a shit about students being here. They say worse than this. I'm passionate and powerful and I'm speaking for my daughter when I say these words, okay? They hear three months later that my daughter was put to the ground by another child instead of a damn staff member by a known bully at the school. If, excuse me, I, I would love to continue hearing everything you have to say. And I also, please, please, if we can please remain calm and so that we can hear what you're saying. Uh, we There's a lot of people on Zoom and we can't hear you. No, oh, you cannot hear me. I'm in front of a microphone. <laughs> uh, when the the audience is nodding, we can't hear what you're saying. We can hear loud and clear. Do I reset my time since you cut me off? You ain't cut nobody else off. I, I stopped. We time. can hear her. Let her speak. <laughs> As I was saying, I do not like to hear from another student something that happened three months ago to my daughter. My daughter cannot talk. So to hear from someone else that I should be hearing from an adult that my daughter was assaulted, let me add in, not only is she special needs and she can't speak, she has seizures. So in that moment, had my daughter had a seizure while she was being pushed to the floor and she died, what was y'all gonna do? Thoughts and fucking prayers? No, actions need to be taken. When this active shooter decides to retaliate, God forbid, my daughter will smile in the face of a gun. She doesn't know what danger looks like. So on top of the stuff that the students are telling their parents, what about the parents whose students can't be heard and told? I just got to walk around and guess what's going on with my daughter? And I'm not allowed legally to talk to her one-on-one -on -one because y'all got policies in place that says that her one-on-one -on -one can't tell me how her day was. You know what I hear every day? How was Genevieve's day? It was good. Oh, you wasn't going to tell me about the yelling racist ass security guard? You can't because y'all got policies in place to mute that from my mind. 
And on top of all of that that's going on, my fifth grader is being middle at the elementary school. So it's not just at the high school and the middle school. It's happening everywhere. Y'all got to do better or get the hell up out of here. Thank you. On Zoom now, we are going to take Melissa Stuckey, followed by Knox Gagnon, followed by Maria Vivanco. I'm sorry. I just wanted to hold on. Hold on. I was just about to interrupt there. There were a couple of people that said they turned in cards that um, weren't called yet. So that we didn't. It was Blake. Yeah, it was you too. Uh, Blake, Blakely Robles, you spoke earlier on the non-agendized topic, didn't you? For the resolution? Yes. Send the card for the comment, the public comment. So you don't, uh, you get one time to do a non-agendized topic? This is very important. This is very important. So I think that's the confusion with the two. Is that, well, this is all uh, not agenda. That might be the confusion with agenda is and not agenda. I'll cede agenda. one. I'll cede one of my two minutes to Blakely. Who is that? Good. Who was that? Linda Rosenberg. Thank you so much. Good. Okay. Good evening. My name is Blakely Robles. I wanted just to say to the parents of the security guard incident. My daughter was also there with her friends. Um, I was the parent that was standing outside the school at the signs the morning of Monday morning after the incident occurred because I was appalled and shocked that I was not notified as a parent that my daughter was assaulted by an employee and I was not notified. I wasn't notified and she called me and saying that she was not safe and that she didn't get human interaction from the front desk staff to make sure she was okay. They just told her file an incident report. I was holding signs out there saying, parents protecting Panthers, CCUSD can do better. Where's the police presence? There is still no police presence out there to secure the, the campus. Went to the police station today. Mr. Tran, I'm not the only parent complaining. Uh, Mr. Tran and other superintendents showed up at the school probably 15 minutes after I was holding those signs. They did meet with me, my husband, and a couple of their parents that were there. I wanted to let everyone know that I'm a children's social worker for Los Angeles County. I'm currently on medical leave, and I shouldn't have to be advocating for my daughter. I wanted just to make a couple things here. You miss Robles. Yes. I'm just going to read. Good evening. I'm an alumni of Culver City High School. I received the class of 1977 service award in recognition of dedication and diligence in achieving my educational goals while caring for my family. I also received the Culver City Outstanding Youth Award presented by the Culver City Elks in our community. This brings me to why I'm here tonight. My dedication and diligence has increased by four children who are now part of the Culver City Unified School District. One has since graduated. My experience with the community and history with the inside the school once made me proud of this school district. So proud that I participated in the video that the school district used called Where Are They Now? However, the school and the, uh, the high school and the middle school did not have the average school fighting that is amplified by social media. These are violent beatings and assaults occurring daily. This is more than an uptick. This is occurring because of the overwhelming amount of overcrowding and lack of consequences put forth from the administration to the students. Yes, children have underlying needs that need to be addressed. I have worked as I have worked at a therapeutic school. I have been an after school program director. Behavior intervention is more than what CCUSD can offer. This needs to be a collaboration between the school and parents and trusted adults. When there is an infraction, the school district is enabling the students to continue this behavior and the fightings is the evidence of the method you have created. The overall safety and well-being of all students have been at risk from guns, hate crimes, rape cover-ups, not notifying proper authorities or the parents of the incidents is a violation of everyone's safety who is suffering from the effects of this. We are all told, yet our schools are all safe. 
They're not safe. There was one more gentleman. Melissa, I'm sorry. There was one more gentleman that said he turned in a card. Um, you asked to speak on 10.14. Are you, but if you're if it's for a non agendized topic, I mean, if it's for an agendized topic, it will come up after the non agendized topics right after. Uh, so you don't want to speak on 10.14. Uh, OK. Uh, can I please take a, a moment of privilege? Uh, so I want to remind our audience that uh, while we assume that the members of the public intend to participate in the meeting in a civil manner, and while legitimate criticism of the board is protected speech, we will not tolerate any threats of violence made to the board members, staff, or other members of the public in the event of a threat of violence, the individual will be removed from the room whenever possible and will be referred to the law enforcement. Please uh, ask you to please continue to provide public comment in a civil way. Um, please follow uh -huh. our protocols so that we can co continue our meeting. And if we cannot proceed with our meeting, then we need to go into recess right now into uh, Close session and discuss how we're going to proceed. As president, I do not. I would like for the all everyone to please um, provide comment and to remain uh, provided in a civil manner. We can please continue. Is it okay to go ahead? Yes. Uh, hi, my name is Vikram Thakur. I am a parent of a sixth grader in middle school and another one uh, in third grade at Farragut. And just like every other parent out here, we are appalled, we are frustrated, we are angry, we are sad, um, and we're looking for answers. We have unfilled staff positions at the middle school, at least. I believe they might be even in the high school. We have infrastructure that is failing and being talked about in public media. And we have fights breaking out in every single, every single day of our schools and our kids are afraid to go to school. I mean, I'll say this again, it's already been said many, many times, our kids are afraid to go to school. I am afraid to send my kids to school. And we're seeing no consequences. We're seeing no plans being discussed. And we have parents who are ready to jump on board, but they do not know what is already being discussed and what is happening out here. My question to the board at this point is, what are we guys doing in terms of consequences to the children who are performing these unwelcome uh, actions in our schools? What are we doing? I mean, why don't we have like some sort of strike plan? Like, you know, hey, you got three strikes and then you might get kicked out. Like, why do we not take action against these minority of kids who are making life hell for 1,500 other students in the same school? Why is there so much cloak and dagger happening? Why is there no transparency on the actions which have been taken or are going to be taken? I mean, it's ridiculous. I asked my kid the other day about another student who has been involved in multiple fights in school just in the past month. I said, what do you think will work? He said, nothing. You can send this kid to detention. You can suspend him for a few days. He will come back and do the exact same thing. Administrative, absolutely nothing. We need to wake up and do something and make our kids safe for our schools. Okay, can we proceed with uh, uh, participants on Zoom? I will repeat the next order. It's uh, Melissa Stuckey, followed by Knox Gagnon, followed by Maria Vivanco. Thank you, parents. It's awesome, but sad too, to finally see so much support. I'm honestly not sure why any of you board members voted yes for a 5% superintendent raise late 
at the last meeting. Have you been paying attention over the past year or even the last meeting for that matter? Thank you, Mr. Guerrero, for making the smart choice that evening. Students in many districts are in crisis mode. This is clearly evident here at CCUSD. We brought up all these issues last spring. Most of you have children on this board. How do you feel about your child attending the school where at any minute they could be jumped from behind and beat the hell up? You know what happened in New Jersey the first week of February? A 14 year old female horribly took her own life after being humiliated and bullied after a TikTok video of her getting beat up went viral. When will you start holding yourselves accountable? Mr. Tran, you can write emails and responses in your weekly letters or even special newsletters such as Tyree Nichols, Monterey Park, Uvalde, Texas, which are all very important. But when it comes to your own district, your silence is deafening. I demand action now. Stop going to your meetings. Go to schools instead. Be present. Hire 50 counselors a day. Gather parents to go stand outside with these kids, support them, show them love, show them care, anything but what you're doing currently because it's not working. Thanks, Mr. Isidore for clarification, but I did hear Mr. Tran speak of the vote, which would be the very next board meeting. So therefore the public doesn't get to see the full transparency of comprehensive plans for other schools. Thus, I don't think it should be voted on next meeting. Thank you. Hey, I'm Knox Gagnon. I'm a student at Culver City Middle School. Um, throughout my whole stay here, I've learned one thing about this school district. You act like you care about us, then ignore our problems. Over the span of one semester, I've been called the F-slur more than 15 times. Now you may be thinking, Knox, why not just report it? The answer is I have. I've reported things multiple times, resulting in the administration doing nothing about it. My friends have reported things with, again, nothing happening as a result. Multiple teachers have told me that they've reported incidents in their classrooms and the administration has done nothing about it. In fact, to actually protect these people from getting in trouble. The same kid who called me the F slur threatened to jump my little sister, had sex in the locker rooms and has been in multiple fights is being protected from being expelled because his relative is a teacher. You care more about pleasing your staff members than you do protecting your children. Let that sink in. I'm sure many of you are aware that on Thursday, hundreds of kids stampeded into the high school and first hall. But did you also know that the same day there were five consecutive fights, one of which involved a knife? Now, you may be wondering how they responded to the incidents on Thursday. They did so in a minute long video going over Panther Pride and how we can be perfect little students. Now, I will admit that Mr. Hawley is an amazing principal who is kind and respects his students, but he needs to step up his freaking game. I don't want to have to worry every day after school whether or not my sister and I are going to be jumped while we wait for our parents to pick us up at Lindbergh Park. I don't want to have to worry whether or not the kid who brought a knife to school is going to use it to hurt me. You do not care about the safety of your students and you especially don't care about the queer community. So either take down your pride flags and stop calling yourself an ally or get it together and expel the kids who make your school crap. Thank you for listening to my thoughts. Um, good evening, board members. Uh, my name is Maria Vivanco, and I am a La Bayona parent. I am here tonight to support my seven-year-old um, child who spoke this evening and her classmates at La Bayona Elementary School who are demanding the right to collectively eat outdoors instead of indoors. Recently, several parents reached out to the other elementary schools in Culver City and confirmed that a majority of the other schools have the infrastructure and resources to allow students to um, eat outdoors at the other elementary school. Unfortunately, La Bayona is the only elementary school that requires our children to eat indoors. The disparity that the school administrators are creating is hurting our kids and further creating a divide and distress between school administrators and parents. We know that Culver City schools and our board can do better. So tonight we are calling on the board to create more transparent policies that ensures equity among all schools. That includes the opportunity for our kids to eat outdoors. Thank you.
Thank you. The next three speakers are oh, Linda Rosenberg, who um, will have one minute, uh, Mi Miyawaki Sensei, followed by Sarah Stevenson. Hi. Um, I want to repeat something that Knox said. Let this sink in. Hearing all the stories, everything parents are sharing about the violence, the bullying, the, the horrifying remarks from the security guard and how that was handled, um, the, the crumbling of the quality of our education. This is all happening on your watch. There shouldn't be a thank you. There should be a serious introspection going on because the current system is not working. PBIS on its own is not working. Killing honors, it's not working. So please, instead of dismissing parents, instead of this history of not communicating, not answering emails, put, you know, having blinders on and thinking, no, no, this is how we need to be doing things, please engage with the community. You've really awoken a sleeping giant here. There is so much going on that needs to be fixed. Please let's fix it. <laughs>